Last week I have been working on the Karantir's leg flaps, which are now also done. What I did was I stitched the edges because when I looked at the um, reference image again, I realized that the sides were actually looking pretty neat and it was just the bottom that was uh, frayed and ugly. So I stitched the sides by just folding over the edge and stitching it. I mean, it does fray, but it's a costume. It won't be worn that often. I, hopefully it doesn't fray that much. And then from about, well, an arbitrary point on, I cut the, the bottom in the way that it looks a bit frayed. And with hand, I whip stitched the entire edge. Just because this fabric is quite prone to fraying and I don't want the entire thing to fray away. So, and as you can see, if you look at it from a distance, you won't even see that it's whip stitched. So, that's okay. So, that's the front. And there we have the back. Also pretty frayed. The mannequin is right now at a, a shoulder level height way lower than my boyfriend's so that will actually not be on the floor. Now he has some leg protection and uh, hopefully it will look cool and it's quite a lightweight fabric so hopefully it will flapper and dance and do its thing when he's walking around in it. And another thing I did last week was finish these. All that remained was to make an attachment so these could be held up on his legs, um, which I did by simply attaching another elastic strap. Again, by attaching a part of foam, uh, looping the strap over it, and then on top I have another loop and that can go over his belt. Um, he will be wearing about three belts, maybe four with this. Um, there will be two belts that should be visible. They are decorative and they will... I'm still not entirely sure one should be going over the armor, but as I said already before, I made it a bit too short. Uh, so it won't fit the entire circumference of the armor. So I can put those both underneath or make another belt, but we'll have to see. Then there is a belt that has two flappy things can attach to, so the fabric parts. And then we also have those, so he has to wear four belts with this? <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous, but we'll see. Maybe we can attach those on the same belt as the, those, but we'll have to see. Basically, that means that all that needs to be done on this armor is the hands, which are also, well, as you could see in the previous video, in June. Um, they are well underway. Uh, I also attached these, so the knuckle bits. That means that all you have to attach is the rest of the fingers. I made these, um, which should go somewhere here. Then there will have to be flat plates between here, flat plates here and then fingertips for all the fingers and then I need to do the thumb separately. Hopefully we'll get that, do that done this month as well and that would mean Karantir is done. <laughs> but we'll have to see because this week I'd also like to finish the blouse which is in filming somewhere halfway part three. It's somewhere halfway the buttonholes. Um, I want to finish that this week because it's my birthday next week and I would like to wear it. Um, the plan for this weekend is to mostly work on that, hopefully fit that to the hands to my boyfriend so I can work on those. But I will also be giving a Warblau workshop this Saturday, so I'll have to do some preparing for that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually giving that workshop. But yeah, that does mean that there's slightly less time for crafting, but well, it's actually, it is crafting. Well, let's see how much we can actually work on these projects. I bought a new friend today. It's this pretty mannequin. She is adjustable in multiple spots. And well, I hope that I can actually fit my clothing on here. So yes, it's also a way for me to display the costu costumes I finished. 
Um, yeah, I hope I'm going to have fun with this. I do have a feeling I'm missing a part, but that's in the adjustable lower part. So she's a bit lower than she's supposed to be, so I'll email the store about that. But yeah, I hope I'm going to have fun with this. Hi and welcome, this time from a slightly different angle. Um, I will be giving a Warbler workshop soon. It is in Dutch, maybe I can subtitle it later, but we'll see about that. But I'd like to show you a bit of, well, me giving the workshop, so enjoy. Nou, uh, uh, welkom allemaal. Uh, ik wacht natuurlijk nog heel even tot mensen daadwerkelijk binnenkomen. Um, ja, dit is het uh, aftrappen van het avondprogramma. Uh, welkom allemaal, ik hoop dat iedereen lekker gegeten heeft. Uh, en dat we er een uh, gezellige avond van kunnen maken. Ja, over deze, uh, deze livestream. Ik had graag op het daadwerkelijke zomerfestival met een aantal van jullie aan de tafel gaan zitten. Met iedereen een stukje worbla voor zich om daadwerkelijk daar ter plekke wat te maken. Nou ja, zoals we allemaal weten, dat lukt niet. Dus ik ga kijken of ik jullie hier kort even wat uit kan leggen over de soorten worbla die ik hier toevallig thuis heb liggen. En um, nou ja, hoe je daarmee werkt. Um, dus nadat ik straks wat heb uitgelegd over deze soorten worbla, ligt eraan hoeveel tijd we hebben. Maar misschien dat we gaan beginnen om te kijken of we deze knakker van een harnas kunnen voorzien. Of in ieder geval een klein stukje harnas. Dan kan ik in ieder geval even kort laten zien uh, hoe je met het materiaal werkt. En uh, nou ja, uh, wat je er zo'n beetje mee kan doen. Helaas heb ik geen grote stukken meer liggen van normale standaard worbla. Uh, ik heb hier alleen nog hele kleine reststukjes liggen. Uh, kijken, zo. Um, dit is hoe gewoon worbla eruit ziet. Uh, als je het koopt, komt het in een groot vel. Uh, en uh, je kan zelf, nee, je tekent je patroon erop uit, je knipt het uit. En van worbla is het handig om alle kleine reststukjes te bewaren. Dus ik heb een heel zakje met dit soort mooie reststukjes. Um, nou ja, ik zal zo wel even laten zien wat je ermee kan doen. Maar dit is eigenlijk de standaard worbla zoals je hem krijgt. Um, worbla gaat over het algemeen over thermoplastische materialen, um, wat inhoudt dat je ze kan vormen en uh, verwerken op het moment dat je ze vormt. De meest voorkomende soorten worbla zijn inderdaad de gladde vellen, waar je dan dingen uit kan knippen die je uh, na verwarmen kan, um, uh, kan bewerken, maar je hebt ze ook in korrelvarianten en alles is gebaseerd op plastic. Worbla plek en gewone worbla zijn ook alle twee worbla's die als je ze uitknipt um, en ermee werkt, je verwarmt ze, worden ze heel plakkerig. Het plakt super makkelijk aan elkaar. En um, je hebt tijdens de verwerking, zolang je met worbla werkt, geen lijm nodig. Um, je kan worbla ook over andere materialen heen uh, leggen om ze extra vorm te geven. En de ene keer heb je daar wel lijm bij nodig, de andere keer niet. Maar met de meeste materialen worbla plakt lekker. Vandaar ook dat ik hier een glazen plaat heb liggen met een stukje bakpapier overheen. Want worbla plakt net iets minder makkelijk aan bakpapier. Zoals ik al zei, worbla is een merknaam. Uh, je hebt nog andere uh, soorten thermoplastische uh, uh, materialen die niet per se worbla zijn. Deze zit een heel klein rastertje in. Er zit een soort van stoflaagje in. Waardoor dit heel goed zijn vorm houdt. Hetzelfde geldt voor deze. Alleen uh, ja, is het toch weer anders. Dit zijn voor mij ook proefonderdeeltjes uh, die ik zelf ergens een keer van ge uh, gekregen heb. Ik heb ze zelf dus ook nog niet gebruikt. Maar ik heb ze wel gebruikt zien worden. En dit is een wat, ja, echt een wat dikker materiaal. Dit is uh, volgens mij Tibra. En Tibra uh, ja, is eigenlijk gewoon plastic. Uh, ik heb mensen het voornamelijk zien gebruiken door het op te warmen in de oven en dan als je een bal had of zo daar overheen uh, mallen. Dit is wat minder makkelijk met de handen te kneden. Voor eigenlijk al deze soorten geldt een beetje hetzelfde. Uh, mocht je ermee aan de slag willen, heb je een aantal dingen nodig. Namelijk een ondergrond die tegen hitte kan. Ik gebruik zelf een glazen plaat die op wat filterpootjes staat waardoor er wat lucht onderheen kan. Um, en een pakpartiertje als je niet wil dat het overal aan plakt. Siliconen matje kan ook. Um, verder heb je nodig iets van hitte. Ik vind het zelf fijn om met een heatgun te werken. Um, een föhn 
zou kunnen, denk ik. Maar dan is het nog steeds minder makkelijk om uh, mee te werken. Uh, nou ja, heat gun. Ik heb deze toevallig laatst gehaald bij de Praxis voor, wat was het, 25 euro. Want mijn vorige was doorgebrand. Uh, dat was een hele oude. Dus ja, uh, mocht je vaak op Workbla willen gaan werken, kan ik het wel echt aanraden om gewoon zo eentje te halen. Uh, verder heb je nodig uh, iets van een pen om het uh, uit te tekenen. En een schaar is ook altijd wel handig om het uit te knippen. En verder heb je eigenlijk niet eens heel veel nodig. Ik vind het zelf altijd fijn om iets van een uh, bakje te hebben als ik met pallets ga werken. Uh, want anders rollen de pallets alle kanten op. Ik zal eerst even laten zien een van de dingen die ik er al mee gemaakt heb. Um, het is voor een cosplay, is dus niet voor LARP. Het is even iets te puntig voor LARP. Um, maar het laat wel heel goed zien wat je allemaal met Warbla kan doen. Uh, dit is een helm van mijn uh, Skyrim Daedric Armor. Um, dit is volledig Warbla. Um, dit is, uh, de platen zijn gewone Warbla. En dit, deze textuur die ik er overheen gemaakt heb, dit is gemaakt met de Warbla pallets. Want daar kan je echt mee kleien en doen wat je wil. Um, want Warbla zelf, ik kan het zo wel even laten zien, als je echt puur alleen Warbla gebruikt kan het een beetje wobbelig worden. Uh, dus je wil graag, als je wat grotere dingen maakt, wil je het ergens overheen leggen, dan bobbelt het niet zo erg en worden het mooie strakke vormen. Wat denk ik leuk om eerst te laten zien, is Wordla glijdt ook heel erg lekker. Daarom, het maakt niet uit wat voor een kleine reststukjes Wordla je hebt tijdens het knippen, je kan het altijd nog gebruiken. Nou, dan uh, ga je de Wordla verwarmen. Je ziet het haast al een beetje uh, uh, smelten onder, nee, je ziet sowieso op de stream zie ik ook dat je heel goed kan zien dat het een beetje gaat glimmen en dan weet je dat het warm is. En dan is je wortla opeens, ja, uh, ik zal niet zeggen vloeibaar, maar dan kan je er opeens mee kleien. En uh, nou, zoals je ziet, het plakt als de lente. Het, uh, het pakt heel goed aan elkaar en nou ja, dan kan je er dus gewoon mee kleien. Nou ja, zoals je ziet, de uh, stukken wortla die ik net had, uh, ja... Dat zijn geen stukken wortla meer. En dat is nu eigenlijk gewoon inderdaad één uh, stuk klei. Kijk, als ik het een beetje netjes zou maken, dan zou dit bijvoorbeeld alweer een stil van een roos kunnen worden. Um, maak je er een paar stekeltjes aan, uh, zet je de blaadjes op. Nou, dan heb je een mooie roos. Now that Krant here is mostly done, it is time to take a look at my costume. Weaves, also from The Witcher. As you can see, that one is also well underway. It's a slightly different costume from Karantia, which is mostly armor. This is mostly lots of wrinkly, wrinkly old skin and dirty rags and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Weaves is wearing a skirt with over that leather stuff, a neck wrap. And I made a leather skirt from old bargain bin leather skins. It's actual leather. And then I made these legs because Weavis has an extra pair of legs dangling out at the front. So as you can see, this is a costume that has quite a lot of skin showing. Its belly, its hands, its legs, its feet, um, which is what I have here on the table. I grabbed some, well, scuba kind of fabric. It's pretty thick fabric. And I just went haywire with latex. Um, I fully la latex these, I painted them. And because of the texture in the fabric itself, we get a nice wrinkly texture in the end product, which is quite nice. It does wrinkle a bit when I'm wearing it, as in it does wrinkle like fabric. But still, this saves so much time uh, when I want to wear the costume. It's nearly impossible to do this much skin every time you want to do uh, you want to wear the costume. So I went with this option, and so far I'm quite liking it. But anyway, uh, what I still have to do is I have to cover up the way that I attach the legs. 
The legs are attached with a fabric strip at the end that just slides over the belt. They're quite light, uh, so this way they're easy to wear. The belt also holds up the skirt. But I will have to cover this. Um, my idea is just to put a leather flap over it and then probably attach it somewhere at the sides. The only problem with that is that I don't want that to be permanent because this skirt will also be used for my Uruk costume. And when I'm wearing my Uruk costume, I'm not going to wear the legs. So I want a way to attach the leather flap, but uh, have the leather flap be detachable, but in such a way that you don't see the attachment points when I'm not when I don't put the leather flap over it. So yeah, that's what I was planning to do now. Um, Weavess is well underway, but I think most of her work is still in the face, which is over here. I'm still not really happy with the current edition. Um, the holes over the eyes will be filled with red googly eyes, and I have to somehow paint everything semi-realistically. Um, but my mold has some holes in it. So we'll have to see what we can do with this one. But first of all, let's actually finish the costume itself. So here I've got three remaining pieces of leather. It's one slightly big piece with actually a really nice pattern. A uh, small piece and an entire small skin. It's a bit difficult to see with the light right now, but that's quite a nice big piece. I prefer not to use that one just because the piece is still intact. So let's see what we can do with these two pieces. So ideally I'd have one piece going down the middle and one piece over it. Uh, in the game, uh, Weavess likes to do stuff with her legs, lift them up and stuff. Um, I prefer if I would be able to do that and then when I lift them up quite high if I have a piece down there you don't see the buckle. And I think this piece is ideal for that. I will have to cut it a bit smaller than it is right now. Let's just put that in here or something. And then we have this piece to go over it. I could do it like that but I think this is a bit excessive. I think that's quite okay. It's not too excessive like this. Oh, I could even fold it. Again, I'd like this to be easy to attach, but invisible and also invisible if I remove these pieces because the skirt does have another purpose. I guess what I could do I really like working with these in various sizes. These are just um, poppers that can be opened and closed. So if I attach one of these on the back here, attach this on the leather piece that we're going to use right now, then it's invisible if you don't wear it, if you don't wear the pieces over it. And still easy to attach. I guess that's what we're going to do. I really like this letter because, well, it doesn't, not only does it have a nice pattern on the front, it also looks really dirty at the back. I mean, this is not pretty letter. Um, the skin is off on some places. I mean, there's a reason why this was in the bargain bin. But for projects like this, it's perfect. I mean, I bought all of this leather, this uh, here at the top, the entire skirt, and I still, well, I still have one skin left. I bought it for 35 euros. It was in a sale and from the bargain bin, but still. That's a really nice price for leather. Mm, let's see, I might actually even use this. It's really eye-catching, and I don't want this part to be the main piece that people look at. I want it to be the legs, my face, the hat. Um, let's see how far do we want this. Mm, I guess something like that is nice. 
Let's see, this goes over here. And then the little flap goes over here. This is where it will attach and then this part can fall back over it, that way you won't see all the stitching lines and attachment that we'll use for attaching this. And another bit of weavers is done. I sewed the buttons on by hand and as you can see, well, or not see, they're invisible uh, when the flap is attached. There is also a bottom flap that goes in between the legs. I might have to cut it a bit smaller. But this way you don't see the buckle of the belt. And even when I lift the legs, you don't immediately see what's happening underneath. It's easily detachable. So that when I decide to wear it without the flap, it's still wearable. I mean, the buttons are slightly visible, but when I wear it, it will be sitting differently. Um, so yeah. Also, maybe I should not be filming with a snake around my neck, because it wants to look at the camera. Hello, snakey. So, um, anyway, yeah. Another task done. Now that I'm here anyway with our pet, let me do a quick pet introduction. I mean, I showed him in the first part of the blouse making, but he's so adorable, he needs his own introduction. Well, this is Sneaky. Uh, Sneaky is a, I believe, 10 year old. Mill ball python. Let me see if I can show you to show him in his entirety. So that's Snakey. Snakey is a male ball, ball python. He is 10 years old and he has been with my boyfriend for about eight and I know him for about six. It's a very chill snake. He likes to explore when he's out. Um, yeah. So just before I started filming this, I saw he was out and about in his terrarium, which generally means that he wants some attention. I think he was mostly waiting for food, but it's not food week for him, because he had some last weekend. So yes, this is Snakey. No, don't go in there. Yeah, so... um. But yeah, Snakey is not our only pet. Um, we also have a female boa constrictor who is about, well, she is sub adult, I think, three years old. And um, yeah, she's still growing. But I'll show her to you at some later time. I think just a sneaky introduction for now is enough. He's the adorable with his little puppy face. Yesterday was my birthday. These were some of the presents I got. It was a rather booky birthday. Um, but I'm really happy with them. So I can now bake breath, make my own vegetable garden. And I got this beauty. Um, the Patterns of Fashion 5 from the School of the Historical Dress. And it's a drool book. It's, it's so full of information on corsets. Uh, the materials that they were made of, and I mean, well, materials, uh, patterns, it's, it's great. So I'm really looking forward to working with this. Um, my first historical costume that I'll be doing is Regency period, so this is not the right book for it. But someday I will find a use for a corset from this book and if I don't find a use for it I'll just make one or something because this is drool material. Ah. To 
today I'm doing some more work on Karantir's hands. Um, it is time to finally start making all the hand pieces and assembling it. So what I did so far was, uh, you can see the blue stripes on the fingers, that's tailor's chalk. I measured the locations of the, these parts. When he wears it, they will sit on top of the joint. But in between the joint, there should also be plates. So there will be simple plates below. Then we have the joint part here. And then we get a longer plate that goes over the fingertip. I'll make those later. But for now, I'm measuring or determining the sizes of the plates that go below. Um, I did that very simply by, well, as you see, marking till, well, about where the plate should go. And um, now I have made paper patterns. And I have made paper patterns for the small plates. I did that by just grabbing a big piece of paper, shoving it in here, and then seeing and drawing out what size it should be. So now I have four separate small parts. And to see if it fits, I'm going to attach the paper pieces to the hand, but of course not permanently. So for that I'm using double-sided tape that's usually used for flooring, I believe. Um, but it's really handy, it sticks well to paper, it sticks well to this fake leather. Um, so just a small piece. Put that one back here. This way also saves me from having to have six hands to hold all of this together. And let me see, that goes around. And then it's stuck. Not permanently, but good enough for a fitting. And then we repeat that for the other fingers. So, now they're all stuck, and as you can see, I hope. Um, you can already see that there are some problems with overlapping plates. That's not what we want. So um, it's really difficult to hold all these pieces of paper on and measuring out at the same time. So just sticking them through here can already, uh, we can already see if there are any problems like this. So I'll have to draw this out and cut it off. And when they, these are, well, looking okay, uh, I'm going to refit them. Uh, to my boyfriend's hands to see if they still fit nicely with all the different hand movements. And then after that I can cut these out of Warbla. Uh, we can slightly curve them, spray paint them and just stick them on here. So let's remeasure these and then we can start the fitting. And there we can see it already fits better with less overlap. So at the moment my boyfriend's still working so I have to wait a bit to fit the Karanti hands. So in the meanwhile I have been doing a bit of work on Weeves. I'm still working on getting her face right. Um, it is in pretty much this state right now. Uh, I cost... well, let me start at the beginning. This is a plaster replica of my own face um, and I sculpted what I wanted as the Weeves face on this uh, cast. Then after that we made a negative mold with rebound silicone and now I can just cast the face. I'm remaking the chin at this moment because I'm not happy with this one. Uh, this is latex, uh, I poured some latex in the mold and then put my face in the mold. So then all the negative space where the clay used to be is now the face. I have not done this all that often before, so my tries weren't going perfect, but this is where we are right now. I also had to recast the nose. Um, I colored this with 12 plain foundation and I still have to do some more coloring, add in the eyes. But right now I'm working on quite a fun bit. It's something that's really adding some character. 
Um, I have some horse hair that came loose from my Uruk mask. Um, I just saved them specifically for the purpose of giving Weefess's nose and other warts some hairs. Um, I will cut them off some a bit shorter later, but I think it already it looks horrible. And that's exactly what I'm going for. It's actually really easy. I just have a needle with a horse hair. And where do we want it? There. and leave it a bit on the long side so we can cut it shorter later I think we need two more hairs on the big wart This big wart here is a bit trickier because the latex is a lot thicker. Um, so putting the needle through takes a bit more force. I think that for these warts I'll leave it at this because otherwise it's going to get a bit ridiculous. Uh, to secure these I'll put a drop of super glue on the inside so that they'll be fixed there. Um, and then I can cut them shorter as I want. Later on I guess I'll also put some hairs on the warts on the chin but because I'm remaking the chin part uh, I'm going to do that later. It's already starting to look nice and gross, exactly what we want. Yeah, so that's Weefess. Um, after the face is done, we can attach the bandages around her head and attach the wefts to the hat. And then Weefess is also pretty much done. And now that I try to attach these hairs with super glue, I can tell you it does not work. Uh, apparently, if you put super glue on latex, it simply will not dry. Uh, so I put the super glue on here, left it to dry for about five minutes, and then checked if it was dry, and now oh, my finger has super glue all over it. Um, instead, what I should have done is just put another dab of latex there. On the other hand, I think uh, the hairs are attached. They won't come out anymore, so... For now this is okay, um, but if I have to do this another time, don't use super glue. Yesterday the mailman brought me a really nice package which included these two patterns. The corset book that I got for my birthday last weekend did not have the patterns in them for the short stays that I want to make for a Regency costume that I'm going to need soon. So that's why I ordered these patterns separately. I've never before had a pattern that was this much paper. It's, well, not ridiculous, but, oh, that's so much paper. Um, and the pattern is quite large. So, um, I've read through this one once. It does explain everything really well, so I'm looking forward to starting that. Um, I will be making the short version of the corded stays. I'm not really sure yet whether I'm going to make it front closing or back closing. But I'll figure that one out later. I mean, first we have to make a mock-up anyway. And after these are done, so that would be the short stays and the chemise, I can start on uh, the actual Regency gown. I'm looking forward to it. In my 10 years of sewing, I have never sewn a dress before. So this is going to be a first. It's going to be interesting, this much fabric. 
and I still have to determine what colors I want to use and everything. But I'm looking forward to it. Time to do some latexing. I had made the chin for Weavest before, but I wasn't really happy with, with the result, so I'll be remaking just the chin part. For that, I have this mold that I made of uh, Weavest's face before. It's a silicone rebound mold, uh, which I made a plaster jacket of so that it has support. I have already put a bit of latex in here. You can see that it's the yellowish part. But now I will actually fit it to well, my face. Uh, for that I'll be brushing in some latex. Uh, I like to be able to reuse my brushes. So before I did this I put a drop of dishwashing liquid on my brush. Uh, this way I can actually rinse the brush after I'm done and I can reuse the brush instead of clogging it up with latex. All that I'll be doing for this is... Just put in some latex. I hope that's enough. Now we can just brush it in and make sure that there was a wart here. So just like this here, we had to put some more latex over there. And I'm just going to spread it out a bit. After this we'll just mash the face in. So any place where the latex is still a bit thick, it will be smeared out anyway. Mm -hmm. And there we go, now we just leave this to dry for a few days. Um, you don't want to open it too early because then you will just ruin it. Like this, we can just leave it in the windowsill and then I'll come back to it in a few days. It has been a few days or rather more like a week since I did any work on Weavis and Caranthier, but that's mostly because since the pattern for my stays came in, I rather enthusiastically started on the mock-up for that. Which is now done, so it is now time to continue on Krantir and Weaves work. So, seeing as it has been a few days, I pulled the chin for Weaves out of the mold. This is what it looks like. It's already a lot better than the other version. Uh, which is rather... Well, bumpy and everything. And this one is actually nice and smooth. The only thing is, I think I did not add enough latex because there is a bit of an air bubble here. So maybe I will fill that up with more latex or I'll just leave it like this, uh, glue it to my face and hope that it won't deform too much when I'm talking or doing anything. So we'll have to see about that, but it's actually looking pretty okay. And in the past week, I have been working on Karantir's hands. Um, I didn't do a whole lot. Uh, I made these paper patterns for the pieces that go between his hands and his knuckles. Uh, as in, they go here. And, well, I traced the paper on Warbla and I lightly shaped the Warbla. So now, let me see, this is pink for the right hand. So, for example, we'll have these pieces here, which are now fully shaped, so these can be painted. I've pulled Weavess's new chin away from my plaster mold, and I think it looks quite nice. At least it's a lot bu less bumpy than the original one. So, I this is the original face. I have cut away the original chin, and as you can see, there is quite a bit of difference. Now, I can attach the chin to the original latex mask. I think I will actually attach it, that it forms one mask again. We will get an edge, 
Um, but I mean, we versus face isn't supposed to be smooth anyway. And putting it on like this, well, making it one mask again, saves again in time uh, when taking it off and putting it on again. Um, I will keep the nose separate just because that's easier. Which means that I have to attach this, color it, add some hair. Then we can add in all the little eyes. Uh, she will get some nice red, very creepy looking eyes in all of these holes. And then, we versus face is also pretty much done. Let's see if we can actually attach these together. Again, I've got a brush with a drop of liquid dishwashing soap to make sure that the latex does not stick to the brush. And I've got a jar of latex. Um, because, of course, what better way to stick latex to latex than just use latex? So basically I have no idea what I'm doing here and I'm just trying something. Let's see how well this goes. see how well that sticks. For now we're just gonna let it dry and then see if we need to add another border of latex around there. I do see that I stuck it on a bit crooked. I mean this bulb should have been here. But oh well it is Weavis. The fact that her chin is a bit crooked is probably not the worst of our problems. That looks like a pretty face. And there we are at the end of July. Contrary to how it started, it's now really warm outside. Um, but craft-wise, I think we got quite a bit this month. Um, we did some work on Weavis, did some work on Caranthia, started on the Regency costume, finished the blouse, and did some other bits and bobs all around. There's actually a lot of work in the garden, but that's something that I don't vlog really, so... Um, yeah, it's been quite a productive month, I guess. And next month is going to be interesting as well. I have a holiday from the ten in the week of the 10th of August. Um, and considering how much work there is to be done on Karantir, I might actually be able to finish it in that one week. So, that's my goal for August finish that two year long project. That'd be awesome. Furthermore, I think I should do some work on the leather armor. Um, but for now, yeah, July was craft wise a really good month, including my awesome birthday gift. So there will be lots of crafting on that as well. So if you'd like to see me craft away all month and see the multitude of projects I'm working on, please subscribe. I really like filming these monthly vlogs. So if you want to see more of them, then stick around and see you next time.